Okay, seventh grade, welcome to our very first flipped classroom lesson. Um, let me explain to you first what a flipped classroom is. It is designed specifically with you in mind. Um, what it does is it kind of takes what you're used to. You're used to coming to class, taking notes, and then taking the practice home for homework. So what this does is you take the notes at home, and then you do come back to class the next day ready to practice. Maybe you had questions or things like that. That way I can address those more easily and help you with your practice rather than just during the notes time. So what we're going to do is I've made our very first lesson and it's very basic. It's very um, easy to follow. It's a vocabulary lesson. So we're going to get this vocabulary in our notes so that we can do some activities with it tomorrow when you come into class or whatever day it is that you come in. Um, what you have is I've given you an organizer that has a big circle on it. And so with that circle, I want you to take it and I want you to divide it into eight pieces just like I've done here with mine. And each one of these pieces will have a vocabulary word in it. And so I would like you to do that now. The really great thing about the flip classroom when you're watching these videos is that you have control of the stop and the pause and the and you know if you have to go to the restroom you can stop it and go to the restroom if you need to slow down because I'm talking too fast you can do that so it's it's all to your discretion which I think is really good so let's start with our first word you're in one of the pies you're going to put the word expression in one of the pie pieces you will put the word expression and I'm going to write it over here pretty big so that you can see it on the camera but you need to try and fit all of this into your little pie piece and I'll give you a second to do that. And an expression, you really talked about it in sixth grade. All an expression is, is it just contains variables and numbers with at least one operation. So an expression is just variables and numbers with at least one operation. And you know what the operations are. That's your add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Okay? The biggest thing about an expression to remember, and this is a key point, is that it has no equal sign. There is no equal sign in expression. It's just numbers and variables and operations all together, but there is no equal sign. Let me give you an example. An example would be 3x plus 2. That would be an example. You notice it has variables, it has numbers, it has an operation. Actually, there's two operations here, the addition and the multiplication. Okay, so it has a combination of all those things, but there is no equal sign. Another example would be n plus 3. It has a variable and a number, an operation, but no equal sign. And another one that you might not be used to seeing is 4x plus 2, let's say, over um, 3 minus x. Okay? So that's another expression. The really great thing is I'm going to move on, but if you're not finished yet, you can pause the video and you can take this information down. Um, I'm hoping that you can zoom in on it, whatever you need to do to get this down. Okay? So the next word that we have... And another piece of pie is the word equation. The word equation is another piece of pie you will see here. And it's very a very simple definition, you know this. And the way I kind of look at it is the equa an equation kind of sounds like equal. And so I would put down here a mathematical sentence that has an equal sign. So a mathematical sentence that has an equal sign. Pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. Let me give you an example. 4x equals 12. 4x equals 12. This is what we call a number sentence. A number sentence is a combination of numbers and they equal something. Okay, that is a number sentence. Here's another example. X over 14 equals 2. You can also have 3X plus 6 
over 2 equals 15. All of those are examples. And remember, I want all these to try and fit into your notes because what we're going to do is we're going to cut that circle out when you get back to school tomorrow. We're going to put it in our interactive notebook. Okay, so try to fit that in there. I'm writing it pretty big, but when I did it in my notes, I was able to fit everything in my pie. Okay, um, the next one that we'll do is variable. Variable. Go ahead and put that in your piece of pie. And again, this is one of those you learned in sixth grade. This is just a repeat for you, just as a review to make sure that we're all on the same page. Okay? A variable is just a letter. And sometimes it can be a symbol. And I'm going to put that in here. You don't often see it that way, but sometimes it will be a symbol. A letter or a symbol that represents. the unknown amount. Okay, it's the letter that represents the unknown amount. And I've used a highlighter on my notes that I'm going to have in my notebook. So if you have one at home, you have different color ink pens or coloring pencils or something and you want to differentiate your notes a little bit, that's perfectly fine. Um, what I did was I put down my examples and then I highlighted my variable. So you can do whichever one you would like. So here's example number one. I have three X. And of course I have my X highlighted because it's the variable. I also have negative five Y. And I have my Y highlighted because it's my variable. Then I have also um, one sixth, maybe um, M, N. And I have both of these highlighted because there are two variables in this one. Okay, so one sixth M N. So when you get that down and you're ready, and you're ready, hang on just one second.